So we are on our second piece of the second tissue lecture and we're talking about nervous tissue now. And for the nervous tissue, I'm also going to include the part about tissue repair at the end of it because for the nervous tissue, I don't have a lot to say yet because I'm gonna talk about it in a lot more detail when we get to the nervous system. So for now, we're talking about basically things that you can see in, in, through the microscope. In the, for the nervous tissue, if you were to look at what, like a, a spinal smear or a piece of a section from the brain, it would generally look about like this. What I would like you to notice that is in this tissue, there are two nervous tissue cell populations. The larger ones here, the more substantial looking ones, those are the neurons. And the neurons are the cells that are gonna be involved in creating and passing on electrical signals. They're the ones that um, send information from one part of the body to another part of the body. So those are kind of like the big players when you think about what the nervous system does, but it also has some very important neuroglia. And in fact, and through science, we're finding out that the neuroglia have more and more important roles than we even thought before. So there are, there's, it's a generic kind of collection of cells, the specific cell types that we will, for now, kind of collectively refer to as neuroglia. So a neuroglia is not actually a specific cell type. What it is, it's the type of cell that supports the function of the neurons. Okay, so looking at this picture, these ones here would be the neurons. And all of these little kind of flies buzzing around sort of look like to me, all these tiny little dark spots all kind of swarming around it, those would be the nuclei of the neuroglia cell. Okay, so then we're gonna talk about more specific neuroglial cells. For now, just group them together, neuroglial cells. So let's look at the structure of the neuron. The neuron is going to have one kind of fatter part, and in the middle of that fat part is the nucleus. So this fat part, this fat region here, this is called the cell body, also known as the neurosoma. For some of you who wanna learn that, that's fine with me. Here is the cell body with the nucleus dead uh, in the middle there. And then coming off of it, you're gonna have a bunch of processes. And a jet process is just something that kind of sticks out of the cell body. You have two general types of processes. You have dendrites, and the dendrites are going to synapse with either other neurons or sometimes they're sensory neurons that receive information. So the dendrites will receive that information. And then the second type of process is going to be an axon, and the axon is gonna send that information further along. Okay, so the for the pictures that we have, it is a, sometimes a little bit tricky to figure out well, which ones are the dendrites and which one is the axon. And the, the best way to do it is the presence of an axon hillock. Okay, so generally the axons will be thicker, more substantial, kind of moving more, you know, kind of bigger, moving away. And, but also they'll have this triangular region at the beginning of it, and that's called the axon hillock, which we, again, we will talk about when we get to the nervous system. Okay, so here would be an axon, and these kind of smaller uh, processes here would be the dendrites. Okay, so what were those two populations in the nervous tissue? We have the neurons, those are the ones that do the electrical signals, and then we have the neuroglia, which we can for now think of as the support cells that will help out the function of those neurons. Okay, on to tissue repair. For the tissue repair, when we look at what happens after you get a cut, the first thing that we need to do is to prevent blood loss because blood vessels run through all of the connective tissues that are anywhere in the body, right? So they're gonna have blood vessels through and we don't want to, we wanna prevent loss of the blood or hemorrhaging inside of the body. And so the first thing that we need to do is clot it. And this clotting is a little bit of a tricky kind of complex problem, but mostly what happens is we have proteins. These proteins are found in the plasma of the blood, so we call them 
plasma proteins, and they form the they help form the clot. So platelets and the plasma proteins help form the clot first. That helps that prevents the loss of blood, kind of clogs everything up, so you can't lose any more blood. And then the second thing that happens is you have fibroblasts from surrounding areas sort of invading where the injury takes place. And if we remember that fibroblast, blast means it's a cell type that makes something, it's gonna produce something, and fibro makes it, means it makes fibers. And so what it's gonna do is gonna make a whole bunch of collagen and that, col that high collagen content is going to bridge the area of the injury and that's going to create a scar tissue and that scar tissue sort of put, like closes the bridge between the between the gap okay so that's going to help close things back up and that's called the organization part and then after that once you have that scar tissue formed with the help of those fibroblasts, then you're gonna have regeneration. And what regeneration means is that the cells are going to um, undergo mitosis and make more cells and make more cells to kind of fill in the gap. And then you end up with a more or less similar tissue than what you started with. Okay, so one thing I did, the other thing that I want to highlight is that this process of tissue repair is showing you the repair of the skin. And that's partly because the skin is especially good at repairing itself. Okay, so when you look at tissue types, not all tissues can repair the same way. Some are really good at it, some are not so good at it. Okay, so for example, if you have epithelial tissues, loose irregular connective tissue, and dense irregular connective tissue, those are actually all just parts of the skin, right? So if you think about skin, you get a little cut on your skin, it's fair, it heals fairly quickly. Another thing, another type of tissue that's pretty good at healing itself is bone, and that's why if you break your bone, all you have to do really is set it back, you know, put it kind of back in on top of each other a little bit. And then the processes of remodeling will just kind of naturally take care of it and it'll grow back that way. Okay, so skin tissues and bone, pretty good at regeneration, especially the younger you are, <laughs> older one, maybe not so much. But I also want to point out that some are not, some are very bad at regeneration and especially things like the cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle, where is that found? That makes up the walls of the heart. And this is especially important when you think about things like myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack. A heart attack. Once you have damage to that cardiac muscle, it's going to be much more difficult and take a lot longer, and sometimes it doesn't repair at all. And so that's why it's very difficult to kind of recover from that type of trauma and things like nervous tissue. So think about things like um, spinal cord injuries. Sometimes they don't repair like at all. So very little or sometimes not at all. So that when you think about it, there's a lot of variability in how the tissue is able to repair, where things like the skin and the bones repair very easily, and things like the nervous tissue, nerve damage repairs very poorly. Okay, that's all for now. See you later.